So good to be back at Horizons Church. Fantastic. Um, I am amazed how the photographs people have of me are always with or without a beard. So, you know, they show the one without the beard. So I grow a beard and <laughs> it's like, wow, okay. I have now got a beard. All right. So it's so good. And uh, yeah, looking forward to tonight. I've got a, uh, another a special message. Tonight, it'll be uh, a message that really is on my heart talking about uh, nurturing a healthy soul. So you don't want to miss that. God's given me some real keys I want to share with you about the, the important. We talk a lot about the things of the spirit, but actually your spirit can be trapped because it's restricted by your soul. It can't get out. So there's so much in you, but it can't get out because of uh, the restriction in your soul. So we'll be talking about that tonight. But um, so what I'm going to do right now is going to teach. There'll be a teaching anointing. I want to uh, share some things with you. But then we're going to put aside the teaching anointing for a ministry anointing. Because the purpose of teaching is to lead you into the experience of the very thing we've just been talking to. All right. So after you read the menu, you're meant to have the meal, right? You know, you're not meant to just read the menu. You're meant to actually, hey, it's on the menu because this is something I can experience. So, so there'll be a very definite moment uh, where we shift anointing to actually minister the very thing we've been talking about. Okay, so I wanted to share with you something that I've found enormously helpful uh, regarding renewing the mind, transforming your life by the renewing of your mind. Uh, and I want to share it with you in the hope that it's going to help you uh, as well. So come on, let's pray. So Lord God, I thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation, not just another sermon, but a word from you. And I pray, God, you lift veils off our heart. This would be an aha moment. Uh, that will shift our lives and bring the transformation you intend to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'm guessing that all of you can relate to this scenario of lying awake in bed and suddenly all these thoughts, uh, regrets, doubts uh, start flooding through your mind, different thoughts, uh, worries that you might have in there. They're uninvited and they're persistent. Uh, and where's all this coming from? Wow. You know, and not only when we're lying awake in bed, but during the day, just having a moment where we're staring out the window and these thoughts keep flooding our mind about things we could have done, should have done, would have done. Uh, and uh, these thoughts, as they continue and persist in our life, can have a great effect on the way that we live, the quality of life we experience, uh, and our mental health in general. So here it is. And I like to add sound effects occasionally when I'm preaching, all right? So da na 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 All right, this is, that's giving you the cue. Get this point. How would you behave differently if you didn't have those thoughts? What, what, would we be looking at you now that you're not having those thoughts about yourself? Would we be going, wow, you're different. Well, what's happened? You're a different person. Well, think about that. I think that's what Paul is pointing towards when he makes that promise to us in, in Romans 12, verse 2. He said, don't copy the behavior and patterns of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. How's he going to do it? All right, by intravenous drip. No, by changing the way you think. That's what it's going to happen. Then you will learn how, with this new way of thinking, that's when you learn what God's will for you is. That's when you learn with this new way of thinking that it's good and it's pleasing and it's perfect. So many of us know, we probably got the fridge magnet, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, very common. But what, what does that actually mean? I used to think that it meant 
pushing all the negative thoughts out of my mind and welcoming all the positive thoughts. But that doesn't work. I'll prove it to you. For the next five seconds, don't think of a monkey. Well, you've already blown it. So now you're sitting there thinking, I don't want to think of a monkey, which I'm trying not to think about while I'm thinking about a monkey. I'm not meant to be thinking about. So that's not it. And besides, that's just positive thinking, and it has no Jesus in it. It has no God factor in it. So what exactly uh, does this mean, renewing of the mind? Well, the person that is best to tell us what the renewing of our mind and this transfer is the person who wrote it, which is the Apostle Paul. And often we make the mistake of reaching into chapter 12, ignoring the preceding chapters where he's led up to making his point. So when we go further back into the letter, we discover what he actually means by the power of the renewing of the mind. All right? And so... To, to really grasp that, we need to go back to the beginning and discover what it actually means. And to do that, we have to become aware of the voice, all right? Now, many of you know The Voice as a very popular TV show uh, that's been running for 23 seasons. I think we've got the... There it is, The Voice. Okay. And I'm told it's going to run for 24 seasons, and uh, it's a very popular talent quest. But that's not the voice I want to talk to you about this morning. I'm talking to you about another voice. I'm talking about a voice that's probably been running your life since you can remember. I'm talking about a voice in this room that is far more influential than my voice, uh, and even though I've got the microphone, it's winning out over my voice in this room all the time. And the voice I want to talk to you about, if we're going to... So what we're doing now is we're retracing. We've got this transformed by the renewing that we're going right back to how Paul's going to lead us up to making that statement. And we're going back to understanding that there's a voice. And it's a thought voice that's been running your life. It's a very influential part of your life. So we're going to talk about a thought voice, your thought voice, this morning. And uh, if you're sitting there thinking, what, what voice is he talking about, a thought voice? It's the voice you just heard when you thought, what thought is he thinking about? What, uh, that voice, that voice that you just heard saying, what voice is he talking about? I'm talking about... That voice, that's the thought voice. Every human on the planet has a thought voice. It's a gift from God. And it was God's gift to you to bless you. It was meant to be fulfilling and functional and help you with being creative. But then, da -na -na -na, then the big mess up happened and the thought voice started to think things that God never intended you to think. Your thought voice started saying things to you that God never intended to be spoken to you. And, and you could think of this mind, this thought voice, uh, suddenly starting up as a radio station that God never intended you to tune the dial of your mind to. Radio FM 666 godless, whatever, antichrist or whatever. Uh, it was never meant to be on your dial. And suddenly it got there and some of us have been stuck on that bandwidth for far too long and it's totally messing us up and it's keeping us out of the life that God intended. So you and I have now, within the capability of our human existence, the possibility of getting into a bandwidth radio station broadcast and listen to a thought voice that God never intended us to be listening to. It's the voice that fuels feelings of shame and inadequacy. It's the voice that robs us of joy and holds us captive in negative thinking. 
It's the voice we're listening to when we have fear of rejection and that we won't fit in. So it's the thought voice of the carnal mind that becomes a barrier that's holding us back from experiencing life as God intended. And here's, here's my point. How would you, come on, think about it. How would you behave differently if those thoughts were never occurring to you? I think you'd be transformed. And I think you'd be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what I think Paul is saying. So where did it all go wrong? If, if this thought voice was given to us as the likeness and image of God, a wonderful capability, where did it all go wrong? How did this radio station of the carnal mind start broadcasting its message uh, into the minds of humanity? Well, the first chapter of Genesis tells us something very significant about the first human, that they were naked and not ashamed. And please don't think that's a reference to the fact they had no clothes on. What that's telling you is they were aware, but they were not self-aware. They were aware, but they were not self-aware. Thoughts like, am I okay? Are you liking me right now? Am I acceptable? Those thoughts had never occurred to them. Never even crossed their mind. In fact, shame was non-existent to them because the self-consciousness that feeds shame didn't exist. Again, Shame didn't exist to them because the self-consciousness that feeds shame had never even crossed their mind. And the Bible uses the term that they were in the state of paradise, but sadly, paradise was lost. And how was it lost? Well, the Creator had laid down some boundaries for humans to live within, fulfill functional life, and He said, I want you to stay fully alive, and to do that, I'm going to deliberately withhold from you a knowledge that I don't want you to have, because the day you get this knowledge, you will surely die. Now, the word die means to lose your aliveness. Students among us, look it up. God was not saying you're going to fall over dead. He was going, this knowledge will rob you of the sheer joy and wonder and beauty of being alive. And I don't want you to have it because I want you to stay alive, fully alive. But sadly, the first humans viewed this restriction as a limitation, all right? Uh, and so they acquired a knowledge about themselves that God never intended them to have. And that's why it says, and then their eyes were opened. What does that mean? It means that for the first time, humans became aware of themselves, how they might be appearing through the eyes of another person. They never thought of themselves like that before. Now their eyes were open. Before they were naked and not ashamed. Now they're ashamed. Self-image had now been born and it was incredibly important to them about how they were appearing in the eyes of other people. And, and now they had a knowledge that God didn't want them to have, and this knowledge created in them the carnal mind radio station, broadcasting thoughts God never intended them to have, and sure enough, they lost their aliveness. Right, Paul Going back in his letter, Romans 8 says, In fact, the mindset focused on the flesh fights God's plans and refuses to submit to his direction because it cannot. When you're in your carnal mind, it's going to argue with this sermon all the way through. It will be, you are sitting there in that mind right now. You are debating, analyzing, dissecting, trisecting everything I'm saying. And you're killing it. Because that mind will do it every time. The carnal mind is not passive to the things of God. It is opposed to them. All right? 
And so when we're listening to the thought voice of this mind, it's arguing all the time. So some of us learn differently. So I've got these slides. Let's go to the first slide. I told you I was teaching. That's not the first one. The first one is without. There it is. That's naked and not ashamed. <clears throat> naked and not ashamed is just, you're, there's nothing in between. You're just fully experiencing everything God's wanting to bring to you. But then the carnal mind came in and, it's, and it immediately distorts everything. Right? It takes every good God thing that God's trying to get to you and it tells you, yeah, God loves everybody, but not you. Yeah, this is for other people, but it's not for you. That's the kind of mind that was telling you not to lift your hands and worship earlier because of how people might think of you. And it's the kind of mind that's telling you, or oh, don't you go forward to prayer. People will wonder what you've been up to. I mean, when was the last time you actually, even though there is great need in your life, will you come forward to get some prayer? No. You know what's kept you in your seat? Your mind. Your kind of mind. It's, it's, it's not passive. It's fighting. It's resisting. We just read that. All right? And so even after the big mess up, God is very kind, and he goes looking for Adam. Some of you know the story. Uh, Adam now is hiding. Never hid from God before. Now he's hiding. Now he's ashamed. All right? So Genesis chapter 3 says, And then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? That's a rhetorical question. And God's still asking that. Come on, get present to where you're at. All right? And then uh, Adam said, I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid. Never been afraid before in his life. What had changed? Thought pattern changed. I was naked. Here it is. Da -na -na -na. God's question, who told you that? Where did you get that? Who told you you were naked? Lots of people think, oh, it was the devil. No, no. The devil exploits your carnal mind. He just magnifies it. He, 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 he just jumps on it and magnifies it. This who told you question, maybe you're, you're wondering how that can relate to that to in your life. Well, let's try some different questions. Who told you you were insignificant? Who told you you'd never be loved again? Who told you you were a lousy mother? Who told you that your dreams are foolish? Who told you that you were ugly? Who told you you were a superior? Who told you you were inferior? God's saying, where did you get that? Because I didn't say that. Yeah. See, the question is inferring to Adam and to us. I didn't tell you that. So where did you get that from? All right? And, and so the question is really God saying, come on, get present to the fact that you're listening to a voice and it ain't me. Because when you're listening to that mind, you're not listening to God. So God's going, where did you get that, Adam? In the hope that Adam would go inside and get present to the fact that he's now hearing a voice talk to him. It wasn't weirdly different sounding like Darth Vader. It was still the same tone of, it was just saying things that it never said before. That's why he didn't twig to it. It was just saying things it had never said before. So it's the voice that's telling you you're not worthy to approach God. It's the voice that's preventing you from sharing with others your God story. It's the voice discouraging you from volunteering and serving and keeping you out of fellowship. Oh, don't you serve. Don't you, don't you get involved. It's the voice saying, stay isolated and disconnected. See how it will rob you of God's intentions for your life every time. And it's the voice that has you struggling with fear, uh, feelings of fear and shame that's causing you to doubt God's unconditional love for you. 
So yeah, that's the voice. And 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 that's only how it's robbing you in church life. What about your marriage? How is that thought voice robbing you of a great marriage right now? How is it robbing you in your personal life? If that voice wasn't there, how would you behave? I reckon you'd be really different. I reckon we'd be looking at you going, whoa, what? (laughs) You've been transformed. Being transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what the scripture actually is telling us. So these thoughts were never meant to plague us and yet we accept them without question so they're shaping our reality. By identifying with these thoughts, by hopefully what's going to happen with this message is you're going to go, wow, that voice... And that understanding, there's a voice talking to me. It's a radio station broadcasting godless thinking, shepherdless thinking to me. That will help you break free of its grip by the sheer fact that you'll wake up to that voice being there. Look at how Paul unpacks this. Romans 8, 6, he says, Now the mind of the flesh is death. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace. The mind, that's how come you know, there it is. He's helping you know which radio station you're tuned into. When you're tuned into and you're feeling life and peace, right radio station. When you're feeling death, the word death means separation. When you're, when you're having anxiety, fear, that's a different radio station. Because you're thinking of your future without God in it. You're listening to that radio station and it's bringing forth those sorts of emotions. All right, let's look at a a Bible example. You know, other churches, the the countdown is a huge time. You guys are so kind. You make it smaller. I had to, oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, so look at this Bible story. I love this story in uh, 1 Samuel uh, 18. And this is the story of what happened to David after Goliath. We love telling the Goliath part of the story, but let's keep going and find out that things did not go that well for David after killing Goliath. Saul, the king, says, jump up on my chariot. Let's ride back to Jerusalem together. Yay! But as they're going through the different villages, Dang, these, these young teenage girls come out singing this song with their tambourine and they're just going for it. It's just totally fictitious. But it says, so they're singing this song that says, Saul has killed his thousands and David his tens of thousands. But it got into Saul's head. And he started thinking, well, this guy, this guy, what's this? They're crediting David with 10,000. Next, they'll be making him king. And so from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. I love this story because it's telling you, normally we're, we're just observing the behavior of people without knowing what they're thinking. Now we're being told what he was thinking and now seeing the behavior of his thinking. That's what's happening here. The story got into Saul's head. See, David was faithful to Saul to the day he died. But that story got into Saul's head and went round and round and round and round. And now he's behaving about something that never happened. Something that he imagined would happen. Now, you'd never do that, would you? You'd never lie awake at night rehearsing a fictitious put of water shudder and suffering needlessly because no, you'd never do that. See, the cruel thing about a suffering story is you can have a bad event and that's painful. But if a story gets in your head, the event can happen once, but the story can cut you over over, 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 
over, over, a million times over. Happens once. But a suffering story can be replayed millions of times. That's the suffering that the carnal mind can actually uh, bring us into the cruel thing. All right? So the problem is, this never happened. Saul was listening to this story being replayed over and and it became his reality. Now you'd never do that, would you? You'd never be listening into a certain mind pattern and 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 letting it become your reality unquestioned in your mind. So how do we get out of the mind of the spirit? How do, Oh, sorry. How do we get into the mind of the spirit? Hey, oh, whoa, okay. Rewind that part. All right. How do we renew our mind? Number one, we renew our mind by answering God's who told you question. That's great. Stop. Go inside and go, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Where's this coming from? We wake up uh, to the realization that the voice is coming from Radio FM 666. All right, we wake up, wrong bandwidth, all right? And, and we recognize the false stories that it's broadcasting and we d deliberately move the dial off that radio station onto the mind of the spirit. You know you're on the right channel when you start hearing promises instead of problems. When you start having hope instead of hopelessness, victory instead of a victim mentality, you know you've changed channel as soon as you do that. All right, 2 Corinthians 10 says, we're casting down arguments, every high thing that exalts itself, we're bringing every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. So answer God's who told you question. That's the first thing. Second, Practice gratitude. Gratitude will push you out of that carnal mind, those heavy emotions to wake you up to, wow, the wonder and beauty of life that's around you all the time. And gratitude shakes off the heavy veil of self, all right, and it's dulling your appreciation for the gift of life that God's giving you. Gratitude will push you out of that, that mind. The psalmist says, I will bless the Lord when everything's going just right for me. No, I will bless the Lord at all times. See, he's pushing himself out of that mind, all right? Look at the, uh, Isaiah 26 says, you keep him in perfect peace whose, come on, whose mind is stayed on you, who's keeping that bandwidth Locked in, okay. Number three, how do we how do we get into the right mind? We stop singing these songs like Christian entertainment and realize we're declaring truth over ourselves. And the reason why we're singing them is not because we're filling in time, some sort of church deal that we're actually trying to. We've had a tough week. We've been listening to Radio FM 666 all week. We're coming in here. These songs are helping us go, hang on, let's declare God's reality, God's truth, God's promises. We're listening to the Word of God right now. You know, as you're listening to a sermon, some of you have heard more sermons than Blake Bennett. Right, and if you argued your way through them in the wrong mind, you left here as guys in our red bitches. All right, you didn't get anything. You just argued. Why? Because the bandwidth in which God was broadcasting live didn't get you because you were right off the dial of where it was happening. All right, so. I want to end by uh, showing you just how faithful God is to keep calling us back into the right mind. Never gives up. And the story of Gideon in Judges chapter 6. Gideon is in a wine press. Now, if you Google wine press, you'll see it's not a little dip. It's a pit. He's right down inside the pit. He's hiding. All right. And the angel comes and stands over the edge of the pit 
and starts declaring his identity. You're a mighty man of, of great valor, etc., and so on. And and so, but we take up the story and we see that Gideon has been listening to this wrong mind for so long. See, that's where you always end up when you're listening to the carnal mind. You'll end up hiding in a pit. Just like Adam was hiding, so Gideon is now hiding, and he's hiding in a pit. See, the thought voice will groom you to accept disappointment and fear, and it'll pull you into hiding. There are heroes and heroines in this room that have been suppressed because they've been listening to that wrong thought voice. It suppressed you. All right? And so Gideon, for the sake of time, we won't read it, but he's got a story. This angel is calling out his destiny, and he says, I'm the least in my father's house. God has forsaken us. Where's that coming from? Radio FM 666. That's where it's coming from. He's, he's been so in this story for so long, it's become his identity. And he's believed it without question. So now, da -na -na -na, he's arguing with an angel. That's how far down this guy has gotten. He's so convinced of this truth that he's even arguing with an angel. Now, you'd never do that, would you? You'd never argue with an angel. Well, you could be right now because the word angel means messenger. And what if I was your angel this morning? What if God sent me to stand over the pit you're in and call you out of there? You wouldn't argue with an angel. If you came down on an altar call and we started speaking the mind of Christ over you and you're looking at us going, if you really knew who I was, you wouldn't be talking to me like this. And yet we're your angel. And you're arguing with us. Saying, you, you know, yeah, thank you for your encouragement, but if you really knew my situation, you wouldn't. No, we're your angel. We're God's messenger. We're called. Because that's what the angel did. Totally ignored his story. You know why God will totally ignore your carnal mind identity? Because it's not his creation. It's a non-person to him. It's, he's going, that, I didn't create that person. I know who I'm talking to. So he just kept calling out gold in Gideon, didn't he? That's how we got him out of the pit. He just kept calling out gold in him. So I'm going to ask the singers and musicians to come back and, and help us. God is so gracious that he will send an angel, a messenger, to come and stand on this platform and call you out of that pit that your carnal mind has got you stuck in. Heroes and heroines in this room. You know, when God created you, he delighted in you. When he was putting together who you'd be on the earth, he was just smiling, thinking, wow, you're just going to be such a blessing to the planet. God created you because he loves you. And if you just fought with everything I just said, that's your kind of mind. If you argued away everything I just said, then what mind is that? It's not what God says about you. So what if I'm your angel this morning, standing over the pit you've gotten yourself in, stuck in, and calling you out of there? So this morning, we're going to create an opportunity for people because now the anointing of God in this room is going to change from teaching to ministering the very thing. Breaking people free of thought patterns. And God's saying to you, I'm the only one that has the authority, right, and wisdom and power to tell you who you are. Who told you that about yourself? Who told you that? Who told you 
you'll never amount to nothing. Who told you these dreams are foolish? Who told you God's going? That's not me. I didn't say that. But when you keep listening to that mind, it'll get you down in a pit every time. But the Holy Spirit's power is here to help you. Come on, bow your heads, close your eyes with me. And I expose that lying, arguing voice that's going to hold you back in this moment. Denying you access to what's available to you right now in this room by the power of God. Now, I don't know everyone here, so I'm going to make a moment for people to get right with God, to break free of negative thought patterns that you've had about Christianity, maybe about Jesus, about church that's held you. But something's drawn you here this morning. You know what it is? Your soul knows where home is. And your soul will be always restless until you let it come home. Home is in the presence of God. And, and your soul intuitively knows that. You tried to take it clubbing. You tried to take it into career. You tried to take it into relationships. And it refused every counterfeit. You know why? Because your soul knows. We call it the presence of God. Your soul knows it at home. It's recognizing this is, this is my source. This is my beginning. This is the one who made me. So I'm creating an opportunity for people who've been wrestling with Christianity, wrestling with church, wrestling with their walk with God to come home to Jesus Christ to come home to God's love. Or maybe you're the prodigal here today and you've drifted away. You tried taking your soul into all these other places, but it refused to be at peace because it rejected every counterfeit. And it's been saying to you, take me home. Take me home. So I'm creating this moment for people to get right with God before we minister in a general way this is a moment for people that are here you're the prodigal that's drifted away or you're the person that's really curious about Christianity and maybe just came because somebody invited you and you came to make them happy but you find yourself sitting in a presence that your soul recognizes at home God waits for you to use the freedom of your will to choose him and say, I choose you. I come home today to God, to Jesus, to all that he has for me. That, that's a simple beginning, a simple choice. The recognition that you need to come home to God because you're not right with him right now. So, ask those helping me to because while every other eye is closed, every other head is bowed I'm going to look out across the auditorium for people to lift their hand and say that's me see what I'm going to do is lead you in a prayer, you can pray it right where you are we're all going to pray it together it's not going to be awkward and cringy but I need to know who I'm praying with and who I'm praying for and if that's you and you're ready to pray this prayer, lift your hand really high, looking out, don't want to miss anyone, I'm providing this opportunity for people to get right with God, that's you right now, this is an important moment before we go any further, I didn't see any, alright let's stand to our feet right now sing this song it's a declaration song remember we don't sing these songs as entertainment we sing them as a declaration of truth and we align ourselves we position ourselves we tune the dial 
of our minds to the mind of the spirit and we access something very powerful. 